I believe up until this point of what I know of you and I know of your platform, I believe you are in a sense doing more harm than good. Simple as that. And so for this reason, you believe that me and Andrew should be assassinated? Yeah, or just not exist anymore because what's the point of you being here if you're not helping, if you're not helping heal, and you're not contributing any solutions to society, literally, why are you here? I don't understand. What is your point? What, what makes you judge, jury, and executioner when it comes to determining the value which we provide God? to society? God? I'm an incarnation of God, yes. Wish, you are God. You could be too, if you were actually doing what God made is, you to do, which is protect and serve women and children. My job is not to protect and serve. It actually serve is. That women. is your divine calling, and you're not no, doing it. Not. So, therefore, you're not in alignment with source. Did you source. learn that at St. Baptist? No, I learned that from life. Well, you said God. The Christian God, which God are we referring the to? The God of life, the creator of life, the cosmos and the biological matter. So you feel that it is warranted then that me and Andrew are deleted because we hurt your feelings? No, it's because I can't see you making any positive contribution to society. Maybe Andrew's different because at least he's, I'm assuming, financially supporting a woman and child. So you can only contribute to society as a man if you, are, if you are serving and protecting women and children. If you are not serving and protecting women and children, then you then, are failing at, at your calling as a man. You're failing at your primary basic calling as a man is literally to serve and protect women. If any woman is coming into your presence and you are genuinely having the mindset and the intention to protect her and serve her. A woman feels that, Brian. We feel it. So if we don't feel it, then therefore you're not serving and protecting us, and I don't see the point of your existence, because if you're not serving and protecting, you basically turn into a predator. That is the most man-hating and misandrous thing I've ever heard, that if a man is not serving women, that he is a predator, that he is useless. On its face, that is, <laughs> like I said, one of the most man-hating, misandrous things I've ever heard on the show. Again, though, so because you think or you feel that we've hurt your feelings and perhaps the feelings of other people, you think that violence can be done upon me and Andrew on this basis alone. It's nothing to do with my feelings as an individual. It's everything to do with the environment of hostility that you are promoting on your platform. How I believe we, it's very dangerous to society how, right now, especially right now. How is it dangerous These minds are not, the minds that we have in this generation are not the same as your mind and my mind when we were growing up. Do you the, think porn is good or bad for society? I think that unconscious, addictive, fake, like acting, porn is very toxic to society. You produce porn. I show my genuine, authentic sexuality. So you I'm not porn? faking anything. I am literally you expressing. You twerk on your Instagram. You twerk on your Instagram. What How is, is that authentic and genuine? And your, I mean, there's twerking nothing. Twerking is a form of dance. Yeah, there is not. There is nothing authentic and genuine about the porn that you're producing. Have you watched my porn? No, I have not, but I mean, I've seen your Instagram and it's absolutely degenerate. What makes it degenerate? It's, de you just look at it and it's just degenerate. In your opinion. Okay. There's many Europe, people that don't in, share that opinion. Right, but conduct and grievances and misconduct, I don't think you should be unalived for it. But you seem to think that because people hurt your feelings, they should be Incorrect. physically, violently Incorrect. attacked. Literally said it. I didn't say it was my tape. feelings. I said it was because, again, I'll say it for the third time because it's not landing for you, obviously. I said it's because I believe as a mother, as a social scientist, as a healer, 
that what I see you propagating on your platform is extremely detrimental to the society that we are currently operating in. These kids didn't grow up with the ideologies that Andrew did or you did. How old are you? How is that relevant? I need to know your generation so I know what ideology you came in with. 35. Okay, 35 and 40? We have women of all ages on the show. But you have to understand that your primary male audience is probably aged 18 to 25. No, actually, I mean, looking at our YouTube analytics, I believe the age range is 25 okay. to 34. Okay, well, let's say you have 10% who are in the younger generation. Sure. Who literally, Probably do. The, the propaganda and the brainwash Power. and the lack of being able to at all handle a trigger. Okay, Wait, I'm, I'm saying these young ones cannot handle this shit that you guys are propagating. They can't, they can't handle. They can't handle words they don't know how to critically think anymore. So when you guys promote something and you are guys that they look up to. Podcast. We talk about dating and sometimes it gets about culture war and political stuff, but mostly about dating. Or, or Brian, are you trying to argue or do you want to know why I am telling you I wouldn't mind if you disappeared? That's what I'm trying to get at. It's not something you can argue with. You're a despicable person, to be honest. Well, I mean, to say that you'd rather somebody... Even, even the, there's no, there's no person who's come on the show, and there's plenty of women who have, who have done malicious things on the show. I don't wish any of them. Because they're despite, pussies. Despite they're pussies. How, hold on. Nobody let me, no, no, understands. No, you gotta let me finish. You when you're a finish. fucking parent, and you have children that you are literally watching day in and day out. Concealed man get donated one hundred dollars. You're allowing this psychotic, degenerate woman to have her way all on you. She says she's a mother and yet she wishes death upon you. This is the exact reason why her child should be taken away. 911. Uh, thank you, Concealed Man. Again, really quick, we've had a lot of women on the show. Some of them have not conducted themselves properly. I don't wish harm, physical, any sort of physical harm or death on any of them. But because me and Andrew hurt your fifis, we hurt your feelings. I'll say it for You're the insane. fourth time. You're insane. It's nothing to do with my personal feelings. It has it everything is, to do with uh, your feelings. But personal I was feelings. looking at it from the perspective of uh, a social scientist who is literally studying what the fuck is going wrong with these kids because it's not okay right now. You, and you think that's... No, you said he couldn't argue with your truth. That is your feelings. It can't be the truth Fine, if, if you want to call truth. it my feelings based in the fucking science right now, sure. Based on the I fucking statistics. And I could just, what, I could, the statistics aren't telling... Science can't give you aughts. The it's statistics saying, are saying... Science is... An psychopaths is, 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 are is. getting younger science and younger. And, and, but it doesn't tell you what you ought to do with that information. Ought claims are not made scientifically. Those are just is claims. This is true. What are you contributing I have, create, I have contributed to the next generation and still am because I'm still raising it. How are you raising them? I have fucking children. Lady. Are they allowed to twerk if they want? No, of course not. So your children have are to your children act. allowed to get mogered on their face like you do in your pics? My is your child allowed to go suck a dick right now? Or is mommy going to pat him on the head and say, good job, sweetheart? Listen, answer the question. I just answered if yours. If that no. is genuinely where my children were at and their development and they were ready to take on those expressions uh -huh. of their personal sexuality, uh -huh. I would do everything I could to make the sure that they were supported $100. in making healthy decisions What's the difference between Desiree and the battery? At least a battery has a positive side. I don't believe that children were born to be indoctrinated by the belief systems of their parents. I believe yeah, that, that every child was born Wait, with their own the, thought I, processes, not, their own the, giftings, their own callings in life. I believe, yes, man, well, morals then, are, are man-made, but there is a code of ethics that we should be born in Which is man-made also? No, ethics are coming from God. Oh, so the, is, okay. So your ethics come from God. Correct. Do you believe that everybody should follow the ethics of this God you believe in? I do. Okay. So how do you get them to follow those ethics if they're doing the wrong thing for your God? Here's the thing. Oh, the wrong no, no, no. stuff sorts no, out. i got to answer when, my question here. What is your question? So here's what I'm asking you specifically. Morality is just a human construct. However, the morals which you get from your God are objective. 
And because they're objective, everybody ought to follow them. Ought to, right? Everybody should or they're doing something wrong, right? I, I honestly, I don't understand what you're asking. Are the, you, when your God tells you what is moral, this God that you worship. Well, my God is more like here. You're the God? I'm embodying my, God. My, okay, you're embodying God. Got it. So you're God? Correct. Okay, so if you're God, then everything you say is what's moral? Well, remember I said I am not going with morals. I'm going with ethics. Okay, There's so a everything you say is ethical. Yes, I believe it is. Uh, okay, and are you going to teach your children that? Yes, that's what I teach them. Then you're fucking indoctrinating children. But here's I'm the not. thing. But so here's the I thing. always give them multiple ways to look at that. Things. If your ethical system is correct and it is morally objective, and you tell your kids not to follow it, then you're telling them to be immoral by your own standard. Okay. I think that you have gotten to the point where you don't want to understand what I'm saying. Oh, no, no, no. I understand completely. In fact, I'm going to steal man it for you. Here's what you just said. I am God. Everything which I say is ethical. Great. So is all things moral come from you? I think they do. Do you teach your children that system? Yes. Great. That means that you are teaching your children what are, from your perspective, objective morals. But you also False. allow them to move towards False. other systems. If False. that is the case, then you're allowing them to move towards immoral systems. False. Okay. I am not imposing a moral code onto my children. No, I am allowing my children to discover the truth of their own being. Because I believe that the ethics that are God-given are embedded in the truth of who we are born being. Since you're God, can you give me your Ten Commandments? The same Ten Commandments that are in the Bible. The same? That I should have no God above you? <laughs> well, no, the Ten Commandments. You want me to make up a Ten Commandments? I'm not being made yeah, to I have five. In the early modern period, from about 1400 to 1775, about 100,000 people were prosecuted for witchcraft in Europe and British America. That's because they were conducting abortions. So, so over here to this, though, yeah, give me your five. What are your five commandments? from God. God can't remember her commandments. God is not omnipotent and omniscient. Well, not when being attacked, per se. God can't handle attacks? He can, but it's Into slower. Into the mic. In the mic. <laughs> God's not human. I, you said you're God. I'm an embodiment of God. Meaning, this body system, uh -huh. little constricted into this, yeah. God's trying to move through me. Now, I still have some restriction yeah. because I'm in this human form. Okay, so God is an external being. <sighs> Life itself. Yeah, th th so God is life. Would that make me God? Only if you are embodying life force energy. I see you trying to stuff and deny a lot of your life force energy that, and argue with God. But, but if I'm God, then shouldn't I be able to do that if I want to? And well, here's the thing. Everybody has the opportunity to embody God. That doesn't mean everybody does it. Slowly over time, I notice by age 35, if you have denied your authentic self that you were born to be for 33, 34, 35 years, I believe at that point, you have literally reprogrammed your own brain mm -hmm. to follow the morals or the trends or the constructs of the time rather than who you were actually born to be, which might be a it's fucking freak. the same freak. thing you're Nashi teaching Nabu your donated $100. If your children listened to your ethical worldview and came to the conclusion that God says they should follow the way Andrew and Brian live, would you also wish your own children no longer existed? If your children decided to live the same way that me and Brian live, by your standard, wouldn't you have to wish that they weren't in existence? Yeah, if they were to your ages, 35, and they were still propagating this, and I saw no hope that they were going to get it, yes, I would wish them not to be here anymore. Okay. For not creating a healthy environment on the earth. 
which is the only reason he... I think that you're stifling a healthy environment for any human being on planet Earth, personally. So essentially, I believe that the code of ethics basically come down to this. Okay. When we're thinking of anything we're going to do, okay, we need to... Now, assuming the person is not a psychopath... The psychopaths are those few people born just... Why would it matter if they were psychopathic? Because if they're psychopathic, they don't have the emotional structures <laughs> for this to work. It doesn't work on them. But they still would need to follow the ethical code, right? You could teach them cognitively how to do it. You could... I mean, you would hold them to the standard of this ethical code. That's all I'm asking. Well, yes, we okay, should. That's and all, if they that's, weren't able to cognitively so follow it, you should code? take them out. Okay, so essentially with everything you're thinking of doing, you want to ask yourself these five questions. And if you can't say yes to mm -hmm. all five of these questions, you're not making an ethical choice. So number one, the idea of doing this or choosing mm -hmm. this, does it give me a greater sense of aliveness? Do I feel more alive when I think of making that choice? Right. Okay. okay so Next. that's the first one. Second one. Is there good in this for other people? So meaning, is it basically like a win-win situation? It's good for me and it's good for other people. Okay. Number three. Does it align with my core values? So Align that values? core values are, is going to imply that you have gotten to know yourself. For example, some people are just naturally super into like animal rights, you know, and that's very important to them. Some people have kids and obviously... Roth parenting. underscore PSA donated $100. This whole podcast should be a course on debate university on how to engage with people and keep a conversation going while getting no real answers to your questions. Appreciate the super chat. What's for? Okay, and then... Because, so I mean, these are I'm real answers. To, What's for? I'm trying to remember. Four is, do you need help from a higher power to achieve this? Meaning, the higher power could be your idea of God, but it also could be a teacher, a parent, you know, an elder, a, a therapist. Just do I need... Basically, do I need to expand myself and ask for help to do this? And okay. Then what's five? And then five would be. Does it require that I grow? Basically, meaning, does it take me outside my comfort zone? If everything that you do, I believe, and you get quick at doing this when it becomes embedded in who you are, but. Everything you're doing, you want to run through those things. And you want to say yes to all of it. If you can't say yes to all of it, you need to keep tweaking your plan because there's a better way to do it. I just want to let you know by your five commandments, Brian is one of the most ethical men I've ever met. Does this make me more alive? So every single time Brian does this podcast, he definitely is having fun. He's definitely getting into the spirit of things. That's definitely part of this idea of aliveness you've described. Is there's good in this? Definitely. He receives hundreds of DMs from men all over the world saying thank you for this. It's been very helpful to me. Does it align with my values? Most certainly aligns with Brian's values. He says, do I need help from a higher power? Very interesting way to phrase it as Brian has been moving towards religiosity lately. Isn't that interesting? Because of this podcast, in fact, does it require that he grows? Absolutely. And you can see from the growth of his channel, you can see from the growth of him as a person when he first started to write now. So according to this, Brian, the man you want to unalive by your own commandments, is following your ethical system to the letter. Okay, well then he has nothing to worry about. But why should he worry about something from you when he's following your ethical code? I'm he asking you why worry. he should worry. If he's following your ethical code, how, what standard could well, you hold him immoral if this is your ethical because code? Because I believe his higher power isn't quite as high as he thinks it is. But he's following your ethical code. Right, but his higher power isn't the correct one. Oh. MMMMM check PLSSS donated $100. And you're, because you're Cliff notes. Diabolical hedonism. Good lesson next. Yeah. I'm going to go get uh, more. Thank you, Check. I'm good. I thought that was fantastic getting that. Yeah. Okay. Lip gloss. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I, I don't really understand. Um, when you say higher power, what higher power are you referencing that he doesn't follow that you follow? I don't, I don't get that. Well, I suppose we'll wait until she's back. We do have a message here. People have an inability to understand that their sense of right is subjective. No human on earth has the ability to be all right, all knowing. That's why we have voting. Brand Drew protect women and children by conserving true masculine values in modern health. So anyways, Brian, you, you say he's not the embodiment of these values because of three, which or, I'm sorry, four. Do you need help? But you f didn't frame four as you frame four, and I took a cliff note here, as you could be appealing to X, you could be appealing to Y, you could be appealing to Z. You didn't say you had to appeal to your specific God. It's interesting that you changed the answer to now it has to be your specific God when we use your own value judgment and realize that Brian is living up to the very ethical standards you demand he lives up to. So you posed the question in a little bit more of an understandable way before this, when, before I went, to, when I was going to get my lip gloss, you had said, well, then who is that God? And I would say the God is the God of authenticity. So the only reason I'm saying that Andrew has basically veered course, even if he's following all those things, I don't believe that this platform and what I see the undertones of it propagating, the subculture, you could say, what I don't see the subculture being coming from your authentic self. This is really weird because all of these things which you have given us are a subjective metric. And as I went through each one of them, you couldn't give me a single disagreement for how he's not following everyone on, especially when I you initially gave us the, do you need help, which is a question as part of the commandment, and then if you do, you reach out to X, Y, Z. You even gave an example no, no, no. of something saying, which is a higher power but not you, God. If this choice that you're going to make, if that choice doesn't require that you basically tune in to a higher guidance, mm -hmm. whether that higher guidance comes from your own prayer and meditation, mm -hmm. whether it comes from a training course from somebody more expert in that area, wherever it comes from, talking to your grandma about life lessons, whatever resonates for you. Mm -hmm. But essentially that ensures that you're having the accountability to have somebody check you. How could you be held to more of an account than already following each one of these commandments actually allowing your accuser to face you, giving the accuser a platform in front of thousands in which to face you down, and following the ethical system provided by the accuser to the letter, how in the world can you reconcile that Brian bad guy when he's doing all of the things on the When you're talking about accountability, for instance, being held accountable to the world in a way that you're not daily. He's being held accountable yeah, in a way that I'm not? Because Brian has... Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people who tune in to ridicule every aspect of his life every single day across the entire world. This is not isolated to the United States. This is Canada, United States, Mexico, South America. This is all over Australia. This is, I mean, there's probably motherfuckers in Antarctica on some station in Antarctica okay, in, in a battleship somewhere who are sitting off the coast watching this fucking program and holding Brian accountable. I could, can't think of a man held to more of an account on the internet than Brian fucking Atlas, who is following all of your ethical systems. And then when you say the one problem you have is there's no way to hold him accountable, he's no, being no, no, held no, accountable no. by way more people than you no, are. No, I didn't say that. I was simply saying, I was explaining. And you know, what I want to say is what I like about ethical extortion, as I called it, mm. is my words will fall flat if you don't deserve what I'm saying. It wouldn't even... That's, that's why I I'm, can threaten you because the reason I can threaten you is because if I do threaten you and nothing happens, well, then you just didn't deserve it. Yes. Well, you're doing the same uh, thing to me. How, I, how have I ever threatened you or said a word about you well, being unalive? The, or... the, the, okay, here's the thing. Your tone and the way that you... Um, mm -hmm. degrade me and every thought I have. It essentially is promoting the message to anybody who would resonate with that frequency of speaking to somebody. It's telling all of them, 
not she's to a take piece shit. of shit. Yeah, not she's to a take piece shit. of shit. Don't listen to anything she says. Mm -hmm. She's useless. She's dumb. And by the way, anybody who at all reminds you of her, also don't listen to them. Yeah, I would actually stand behind the idea that you are dumb and crazy and that nobody should ever listen to you. But I have good justifiable reasons for why and I think that, fair. which fair. have been demonstrated. That's the fair. idea that I'm not following your moral system is laughable. I hold myself to a way higher standard than what your ethical system is. And so does Brian. That's what's wild to me. And then it's like, okay, but what about being held to account? Not only is he held to account by tens and hundreds of thousands of people, but he's actually allowing you to confront him right now. How could you be held more accountable ever? And you know who disengaged, who didn't want to hold Brian Atlas to account? You. Because the second he had an opportunity to engage, and the second you thought, oh, wait, I might be wrong, you shut down, you started crying, you pouted, and you rage quit. Imagine you being the person who could finally hold someone to account who fell short of your ethical system, and when you get the opportunity, you just start bawling like a baby and rage quit. I don't really believe that it's necessary for me. I have listened to every episode of whatever, followed politics for years, seen horrifying things in my own life. I have never seen or heard such delusional, horrifying BS in my life. How is it when you finally have the opportunity to confront the person who you think is so problematic Instead of actually doing the confrontation, you break down and start crying and leave because they disagree with why you hate them. That just, that's just nuts to me. It's such a rare opportunity that anybody ever gets inside of these spaces ever to confront the people that they have a problem with in front of their audience, on their turf. <clears throat> and yet when you did it... I frequently will have people who make videos criticizing me, criticizing the show, criticizing Andrew. They'll voice their criticisms on Twitter. They'll make YouTube videos about it, news articles, whatever. And I'll actually invite these people on for them to actually face me, face Andrew, and voice their actual criticisms and critiques. Explore so you could hold me to account and hold me accountable for the ways in which you think I'm conducting myself inappropriately or poorly when I've given you the opportunity. In every instance, you've just shut down, you hit your little no joke button or whatever. So, I mean, I just have to ditto and echo exactly what Andrew said here. And the last thing I'll say on this point, the reason that I believe that you shut down is because it was the first time in a long time you've been held to account for something. And the second you get held to account, well, wait a second, I was here to just go after you. What about you. the court case that I'm in right now? What about what, it? That, the one that, that you that not, I haven't even gotten to court yet. We only have done the mediation, are which is why plaintiff? I had to... Huh? Are you the plaintiff? Which one's that? Or did you bring the case or did somebody else no, bring the case? No, the ex did. What kind of case is it? It's a custody case. I have full custody right now because they're not safe with their dad while the investigation yeah, is going Yeah, that's not on. being held to account. There's a distinct... How is that not being I'll held to account? Because here you have a process in which you're being held... The, the, the stakes right, while high, are actually kind of low. In other words, you could have your kids taken away for, from your, by your ex in this instance, right? And I'm not hoping that this happens, but I'm just saying, if it did, you could always say, that had nothing to do with me, that's because the court system was unjust and unfair, it's because of this, it's because of that. You could make all of those claims. Much harder to make the claim when somebody else just shatters your worldview in five seconds and you can't defend it. No, there's a difference between me getting emotional because an ego construct that I really was invested in maintaining shatters. That's totally different. That is not something that I do on the spot in a situation like this. What you guys saw was genuinely, Brian can read my rantings from last night. I wasn't even gonna come. I was literally crying myself to sleep, like scared Yeah, to but come. that's how you deal with trauma. Yeah, and so I felt that I had moved enough of it out of me, and he said, relax, it'll be fine, don't fret. It has been fine. The only person who's fallen apart here today obviously, is you. Well, obviously, I wasn't strong enough. Yeah. I cried because there's a lot of pain points. Yeah, because you were being held to account for the horrible things that you've been saying. No, it was because, again, I felt that... 
your points of attack weren't working. And so they no, made you I, upset no, when there I was a counterattack. No, I felt that my attack. platform and who I am is being grossly misrepresented. You're the one representing it. I am being pigeonholed into certain responses oh, so you're a victim? by you. Yeah. In this situation, yeah, I'm, so you're I'm, a victim. So, I'm being victimized. So when, so when invited on so that you could make all of your attacks, that's fair. But if somebody counterattacks, which is what you say we should do, 